locomotive that you see behind me, it was built by the Grant Locomotive Works. I think it was built in December of uh, 1881. Uh, it was on a subcontract from the Denver and Rio Grande needed these locomotives. They went to the Baldwin Locomotive Works. Baldwin couldn't make all of them, so he subcontracted the build of about 30 of them. This is the only Grant uh, C-16 still in existence. The rest have all been scrapped. It was given to the city of Salt Lake City in the 40s. I first became aware of uh, 223 when it was in Liberty Park. And uh, then one day I noticed that it was gone, and uh, I tracked down where it went. Uh, the Historical Society had moved it down to the Rio Grande Station in Salt Lake. And I stopped in and talked to the people there, and, and they were interested in uh, having it moved. And I says, well, you know, I'll, I'll bet Union Station in Ogden would love to, to have that, and uh, there's people there that would like to try to restore it. So we sent in a proposal and uh, we got a little grant from the Historical Society. It was enough to move it to Ogden and uh, we've been working on it ever since. My job is just kind of to hopefully get this thing all put together and running again. That means we have to rebuild maybe about 40% of it. And what you see is where we are right now in the locomotive. Doesn't look like too much, but uh, a lot of the sub-assemblies have been rebuilt, redone. Uh, we're trying to finish up the tender tank, and once we do that, that will move out of the shops, and this locomotive will move into the shop. Uh, it has a problem, the wheels don't turn, nobody seems to know why. Uh, we have some ideas, but we're just uh, committed to make it run again operational. We'll do whatever is necessary. You know, like the tender tank is completely, it'll be completely new. The frame, the tender frame is all brand new. We're basically using the wheels and the brakes and some of the appliances off of the old one. This uh, area where we're at now was at one time the uh, railway post office. When the station became a museum, uh, this was no longer used by the railroad for its employees and uh, we asked if we could make a shop up here to do our restoration work. And so we were able to get some funds and some donated equipment and some war surplus uh, power tools and got this shop set up. Okay, this is the number of the locomotive, 223. This is the type of locomotive, C-16 is the smallest locomotive. Here's an air tank that goes on the locomotive. Here's the headlight for the locomotive. And so what you see, we have a lot of sub parts uh, redone. Here's the glass that goes into the cab. This is a new pilot here. People call them cow catchers. And you, on my right side, you can see the old piece of wood and then here's the new one. This is oak, came from Tennessee. This is called the dynamo. This generates electricity for the headlight of the locomotive. This has been completely redone. It's basically a turbine, steam turbine, and a generator. It's a fairly complex piece of equipment. What you see back there on the shopping cart is how we find a lot of the pieces of the, the locomotives and cab. Those are all cab pieces. Uh, a lot of it was all broken up, and we just, uh, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. You look at the various pieces, and uh, look at the color of the paint, and you figure where they all go. Well, if you looked right at this piece right here, you probably wouldn't think this is much. This is a key piece there's a wind uh, deflector, and this is the latch for holding the wind deflector closed. That's why none of this gets thrown away until we get done. So it's kind of like putting a puzzle together. We take a lot of pictures of everything when we take something apart, and then we take in, uh, hopefully a few years later, we can take and put it back together. These drain gutters are kind of interesting. Uh, 
a lot of local companies have supported us on various aspects, and this turned out to be uh, quite a difficult project for one of the local sheet metal people. Nobody does work like that anymore. Here you can see the front of the cab. Uh, this gets covered with the uh, steel plate, and there's some of the old steel plate laying on the floor. We're laying out the holes and how it's got to be built. I don't know if anybody's interested in what a steam air compressor looks like, but uh, there's this locomotive has two of them on it. This is one of them, and this one's been all completely refurbished. Uh, you're looking at $14,000 there. That's the problem. Everything seems to cost a lot. If you look at the door, this is where people came through to go down the front of the locomotive. Now, you can't be very big if you're going to go through. This is on the engineer's side. The door could be closed. This is a glass piece and this is a gla new glass piece. So they had to be small people. And the boiler set right here. So this area was a boiler area. So basically steam locomotives are just a teapot. You get the water hot and steam and use the steam to propel you. This locomotive 223 uh, had operated down in Colorado and New Mexico, and it could have probably come into Utah. Our website is www.theunionstation.org. And uh, on this website, you can see a calendar page which tells the activities that are going on at the Union Station. Uh, and we have a section on projects which lists the uh, present uh, restoration work that is undergoing. We have a railway post office car, the hospital car, uh, the Moon Glow, which is the last remaining car of the General Motors train of tomorrow. It's probably one of our most historic pieces. And then, of course, the 223. The cab, which you see, is right here. So he only got about, oh, I don't know, 18 inches width. So I sometimes think, uh, the engineers and firemen of days of old had to be small people. Here's the drivers, and we're trying to get these to turn. Uh, one of the reasons to get them turned is because we want to take off. We have to put new bearings in. The bearings have been taken out. And uh, to get the side rods off, it's easier if you can roll it back and forth to line up where you can pull the bolts off. The very front of this, this is called the smoke box. You can look inside. Basically, the fire comes out through those holes, those pipes. Those are the flues and the tubes. Comes in here, then goes up the stack. And the exhaust steam comes up from a hole. They have a thing called a petticoat that sets in here. Blows the steam up, and that creates a draft to get the smoke out. And if you look in there, there's a big casting for the steam pipe and it's broken on the bottom. That means we have to make a new casting. The timeline, it was supposed to have been done already. <laughs> About year 2000. It's kind of an expensive project. Uh, probably five to ten million dollars. And so we raise the money and we find the people to work on it. As a group, uh, part of the Railway and Locomotive Historical Society, Golden Spike Chapter, and there's a group of us, I don't know, it varies, uh, maybe four to six individuals are down here working on it. We usually come down on Saturdays, because uh, most of us are retired now, when we started this, we weren't. Meet here at 9.30, and then uh, usually go until the whistle blows at 12. And then uh, if we're doing something, we'll keep on going until we're ready to go home.